let me talk for just a few moments and certainly I give honor to God and to the angel of this house Pastor Dom and to all of our elders and leaders. Mom Hill, my wife, certainly grateful to God for her. Let me uh, let me talk for a moment. I'll get into the scripture. Um, but um, I'm I'm hearing what the Lord is saying, and just let's just move with where the glory goes, right? And so we started off this month, this month we, we started off and we gave a mo momentum offering, yes. right? We gave a momentum offering because we were, we're expecting something. We, we are expecting 20K in a day. That's what our expectation was and still is. And so one of the things that I was thinking about and one of the things that the Lord has told me is that um, we're going to see 20K in a day. But everything starts with a seed. And everything starts with a seed. And everything starts, momentum is a moment where things get moving. And, and so, so God has given us as a church family a push, yeah. a, a, a push, and 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 and, and if we, we understand the law of movement, it it uh, an object in movement stays in movement, right? Unless there's equal force that will stop the object. So, so there has to be equal force to stop an object in movement. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, and so God has given us a push and we're moving. We sow now seed and we're moving, right? We're believing God. And he's given us a push and I inertia it, uh, object it, it, and movement will will continue to move unless there's equal force to stop the movement and and I want I, I want us to understand where we are because we we're, we're 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 moving we there's momentum there's momentum there's folk 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 are believing God and they've sown in to the vision that we 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 we're, we're moving the momentum was to get us going and get us a good start for the coming year right that that's what it was for that, that see don't miss the fact that god wanted to get us going he's already pu 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 propelling us and and moving us forward into the next year because he already knows what he has for us to do he wants to get us off to a good start and we're moving and the only thing that can stop us is an equal force that is coming against us and, and see this is not even in my notes but I hear the Lord um, I, I, I don't have the scriptures in front of me but 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 the, but the um, no it's not in there uh, when Israel was on the move, um, there was kings who was uh, the king who had went and grabbed a prophet and asked them to curse Israel. And Balaam, I believe, the prophet, yeah. right? He looked over to Israel, and first God told him not to even go told the prophet don't even go look don't go but the king just kept persisting and so Balaam went he looked over him 
And uh, he says, he says, he says, and and he the king wanted Balaam to curse Israel. And and every time Balaam would open his mouth, he would bless him. He would bless him, and the king got mad. He said, "Look, I'm telling you, I have to re you know, I can only say what the Lord allows me to say." And the Lord is, <laughs> and he just kept blessing Israel, right? But Balaam did say this. He says, the one thing that can stop them it is nothing that really can stop them. The only thing that can really stop them is themselves. He says, if they begin, if you allow them to start mixing with folk and get their attention off the other things, that, that, that's the one thing that will stop them. We, 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 we got to understand that what stops us is not necessarily uh, the outside forces because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world, right? Yeah, yeah. But it is us who stops ourselves when we begin to get distracted in Galatians. In Galatians, and I'm going to get here because this all ties in. In Galatians, Paul tells the Galatians, "You, why? Who fooled you? Who bewitched you? Who, who, who caused you to stop going in the and that you you had momentum, but you didn't stop because you started listening to other people. You you started listening to other people. You started uh, you started off well." Now somebody then, and if you look at it in the original, I'm pretty sure uh, Pastor Dom knows this because he got a nice, uh, 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 he has a, he wrote a book, you know, get his book on Galatians. He got a real nice book and some real nice commentary, but, but it, it tells you who cut you off, who cut you off, who slowed your momentum. outside voices you, you, you begin to hear taking in bad information and it cuts your momentum off and I, I mean, if you look at me and I know you feel it because you you it, 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 and, and, and it's the, the the thing about it is the thing about momentum is that once you stop it's so hard to start again oh you know you know you know you know you know you know what you, you you try to start exercising <laughs> and you finally you finally get yourself to start exercising and before you know it something comes and cuts you off you get injured or you something happens and it cuts you off and then all of a sudden and then, and then you stop and the, and and then you still and you stop you, well I'm going to stop and then I'm going to get started again. And, 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 and for the life of us, that start never really start. And we keep looking at ourselves in the mirror, telling ourselves, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this. And we're still trying to start again. What we got to understand is that we can't, we got to guard ourselves from letting people cut us off because once we get started it's hard to start again once you stop and it's just like that in the world and in the realm of faith we're believing for something and we're we're believing we that we get that initial push we get that push and we're off. We're trusting God. And we hear a word of faith. Yeah. And where God has made himself absolutely positively known to us. We hear that word of faith and the word of faith tells us and we grab hold of it. But then life starts lifing. And then I start looking at life. And life starts getting bigger to me than the word that I heard. But I got 
momentum. But all of a sudden, I'm starting to slow down. Finding reasons and rationales that is going against what I'm believing for. And all of a sudden, my steps are not as sure. They're not as consistent. And I'm not persevering like I should. And then all of a sudden, before that, that, that diligence that I had, with that confidence that I had, the movement that I was making, the progress that I was making, all of a sudden, it begins to slow down. My run becomes a trot. My trot becomes a walk. And before you know it, I just stopped. Because I was listening. And I was looking at life. And I lost focus. And my momentum had, that I had shifted. I gotta, I gotta guard my, I gotta protect it, my, the word. I gotta, I gotta hide God's word in my heart. I, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, the, 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 the Lord told me on Momentum Sunday, he told me on Momentum Sunday, he said, this is, a, this is, the, you, 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 this, is the, this is a start. This is how to start. You, you got to, we launching out. We're pushing. We'll see $20,000 in a day. That'll be a usual offering for us eventually. That, that is going to be a usual offering. Yeah. That's going to be a usual offering. We'll see, we'll see 20,000 on a regular basis. But to get there, we have to maintain our momentum. We, we got to gotta maintain our momentum, the 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 stop, the trust that you had to trust God to give that one time has to be the same trust you demonstrate on a consistent basis. Because it's not about the gift that you're giving to the church; it's about the faith that you're displaying in the Word of the Lord. And I didn't make, I didn't mean this this. This, what I really have to say is really not about the offering or giving. That's not what, but I just hear, see, because, because when, 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 when the in one of the areas that the enemy constantly gets us in our faith walk is giving. Giving is one of the places of attack where, where the Lord, where, where we always find ourselves disputing and challenging the will of the Lord. You know, for many years, you know, it was, you know, churches always beat us up with the 10%. Gotta give 10%. Well, I'm ahead. Rob God. And really what the Holy Spirit is really telling us even today as a church is that God just wants to have your heart because if he has your heart he has everything that goes along with you and whatever he says give you'll be willing to give will it be the will it be the start at a 10 whatever it could because 10 percent is not necessarily really the the it's just the, that's what he gave israel to start but it's not even just israel but you know way back in scripture Jacob said, anything that you give me, I'll give you 10% of it. That's even before the law. It's not about it. It's really just a heart issue. Will you trust God enough to give him what he asks? To give him what he asks. That, that's, that's, 
That's how momentum stops. See, the momentum stops when we start trying to reason rationale and determine. Ah, you know, I hear what you say, God, but I got life is life in, and this is what you're asking. See, but 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 it's always but but it, when it always when it cuts down to Jesus is always asking us. You gonna you, you gonna let me lead you, or you gonna lead yourself? Yeah. That's what we read that we know that scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge, and He shall direct you. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's listen we're moving we're mo you are individually moving if you look if you're seriously honest about your life if you take a really good look at what's going on right now you are in a place that you know you are far better now than you were just a few days ago we're, we're coming into the end of the year and where you are now is not where you were in january where you are now is not where you were in february where, where you are now is not where you were in march april may june july august september where you are now is not where where you are now even at this very moment is not where you were last week come on, come on. Come on. hallelujah yes, <laughs> oh god where you are at this very moment is not even where you were this morning when you woke up you're moving and don't let nobody tell you you ain't don't let nobody tell you that you are not moving. Don't let nobody give you the play the mind thing. Oh, you think you this or that because. You know, folk, the, the folk closest to you will begin to start talking jack. About, oh, okay, you, you like that now. Oh. Folk close to you won't understand where you are some days. But I want to let you know you keep moving. <laughs> keep moving. Keep keep moving. Don't let no don't you compromise your movement for somebody who don't want you to go nowhere. They want you to stay where you are because it makes them feel comfortable. They want you to be who they knew you to be because then they don't have to change. That's what they want. They want to see you stay in your misery because they're miserable and they like it that because when I talk about my misery, you can share yours and we can have a pity party together. wants to take us will require some work on our part it, it, it requires work because it's just not going to happen it, it, if, if you're if if you're to get to a destination you have to move you 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 can't 
where you're sitting and get home at the end of the service if you stay where you're sitting. It requires for you to get up, get in your mode of transportation, and move towards the place that you intend to go. It takes some work. And people, and the people of God, have to understand that work is not a bad word. <laughs> it's not a bad word. Expending energy is a good thing if we're doing it for the right reason and it's producing the right results. And that's, and work is a good thing. See, because most of us, a lot of us, we, 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 we get into this. Let me, let me read the scripture. If we can pull it up. Uh, let's put up Philippians 2. All right. Philippians 2. Uh, let's put that up. It says, dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard. Everybody say work hard. To show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. That's verse 12. Verse 13 says, for it is for God. I'm sorry. I'm, I got it memorized in the King James. And so, <laughs> but I got it written here. I was about to let my mind take me somewhere where my words in the, was it. It says, for God is working. Say, God is working. God is working. In you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Work, work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard, be diligent at, um, This analogy don't really feel good at the moment, but it's the one that I had um, that I was prepping for. But I'll, I'll use it, uh, and and I hope I, I hope it don't mess up the moment. But I think it'll give you a little bit of understanding what I was. Saying. I used to be an athlete when I was young. I used to be younger. I was an athlete. I was a good athlete, actually. I was, I was good. I wasn't bad. No, 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 no cap. <laughs> I was pretty good. My my wife would testify. She she would. I was pretty good. And so um so I'm I'm a I'm a sports fan. I'm a sports fan now, right? I'm a sports fan now. I'm, you know, we watch the Ravens, y'all we know we yeah. go back and all that kind of stuff. Um so a lot of young athletes now it has this catchphrase. And this, this word came to me because it, this is something personal to me, right? This is personal to me. I'm just sharing something that's personal to me, right? So the, a lot of young athletes has this catchphrase is that, you know, I put in the work. I put in the work, right? <laughs> um, something just crossed my mind, but i say that one for me. That's personal. Anyway, wow. um, tell, tell, tell me to come back. Come back. Yes. Um, so it's a catchphrase, right? It's a catchphrase where people say, I put in the work. Um, because um, greatness requires work. If you want to be good at anything, if you want to be great at that, if you want to master something, you have to put time in doing the work that is required to elevate your skills. Yeah. To elevate your skills, to, 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 to work through. You know, um, I, I like Steph Curry. He's a you know, basketball player, for those who may not know. 
Um, he, he's, you know, they consider him the greatest shooter uh, in the NBA of all times. He's made the most three-point shots uh, in the NBA. He, you know, he leads the NBA uh, in three-point shots made. He, he's a terrific player. He's a great player, right? Um, I heard him talk in a, in a podcast talking about he tries. He, is, he, 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 he thinks he's almost there, but he's trying to shoot almost a million shots because he understands that in the repetition, in the muscle memory, in all of that, and so he, if the shots that he makes and tries and games are just sometimes incredible, but they're all shots that he's practiced. They're practice, shots that he works on and practice consistently. He works on those type of things. He works on his shot. And so he shoots the way he shoots. He's been able to do what he's been able to do because of the work that he's put in. He's considered, among many, one of the greatest shooters ever. Considered. And so, greatness in secular circles greatness in life you know does not come at without paying a price right yeah, yeah. does not come without putting some work in without putting some time in without practicing and disciplining yourself yeah. to do the things that are required and to take you to that place of greatness yeah. without some work. Yeah. You got to put the work in. You have to do the work. And so, uh, and, and greatness, we, 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 for some reason, in the body of Christ, um, confuse the fact that it's okay to be great as a believer. God ain't having no problems with people being great. This is, this, think about this. The night that Jesus was about to be betrayed and all that, his disciples got into an argument about asking who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. Yeah. And you know what? Jesus really did not. Jesus didn't have a problem with them talking about greatness. Go check it out in the scripture. He didn't have a problem with that. This is what he told them. He says, look, the great ones in, in the world, they lord their authority over people. But if you want to be great in the kingdom, you have to be the servant to everybody. You, you got to be the one who's doing the work. You need to be serving. So the greatest ones are the ones who serve. The ones who were willing to work. God didn't have a problem with people being great. He don't have a problem with being great. He wants us to be great. He got no problem with us being great. You know, all of that stuff about being humble, we ought to be. Because if, you're, if, if you really wanted to, the desiring to be, because you humble yourself to serve others. You humble yourself to put in the work. And, and Paul was telling the, Corinth, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the church at Philippi, he was telling them, he was like, look, 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 because there was a lot of little stuff that was going on in the church. It was some, some little, he, was, he was speaking to them in regards to some divisions and some scuffles and some quarrels and all of that. And, he, and, and, and before he gets there, he said, I need you to be thinking like Christ. I need you to, let, to have the mind of Christ. Yeah. I need you to, you know, Christ, who, 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 who is God, Jesus, who is God, yeah. who is God, uh, humbled himself. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, set, he, 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 he set himself below his status, came to earth, walked as a man, obeyed the, the, the will of God, yeah. even to the point of death. And at that point where he gave up his life, for the will of the Father, now he's highly exalted above all names. 
And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he's Lord to the glory of God. He don't, God don't have a problem with us being great. Yeah. He's all about greatness. He's great. God is great. Yeah. And, he don't, and, he, and his children ought to be great. Amen. His children ought to be doing excellent things. How can I, how can I, be, how can I be great and my sons and daughters ain't great? I, I, you, I, I've given you my power for you to reflect who I am. You ought to be demonstrating my greatness. Let me, let me talk about a couple things, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to just, and then I'll stop. You know, you know we are, we, we're, we're an excellent church. We do things in excellence, but we love football. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got to get out on top. <laughs> yeah, we do later, though. It's not, it's not totally. Listen, listen, listen. God, God doesn't have a problem with that. See, but we, 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 we take, we, we, and, and, and see, this is the problem. See, that word work and works, um, Many of us have, and you know, many, many, many times we get, we get, we get, um, we get it twisted. We get, we get it twisted because, 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 uh, because we have to understand that the work that we do is not to get us saved because, because Ephesians, let's put that up real quick. Ephesians two verse eight and nine, it says for by grace, we for by, gr let me stop. I'm sorry. I, I'm, there's a lot of verses I have memorized in the King James, you know, so I got it. So when I start talking, a lot of times it's just out, it's out of memory and not what I, not the scripture that I use. All right. Here it says for by grace, you have been saved by faith. N nothing you have, nothing you did could ever earn this salvation. For it was the love gift from God that brought us to Christ. So no one will ever be able to boast for salvation is never a reward for good works or human striving. That, that's clear, right? So it's not that we are working for salvation because God gave us the gift of salvation freely. And there's no work that we can work that will ever get us in. Nothing that we could do on our own merit that will save us. There's nothing, nothing, nothing in our human striving that could. So, 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 uh, 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 so, so, I, I'm just going to get off of that because I got to move. So it's not by the works that we do. Titus tells us that, but it's by grace we're saved, right? That, that's what Titus says, Titus 3, 5. It, it, it's, not by, it's not by the works, not by righteous things that we do, but because of his mercies. He washed away our sins and gave us, uh, 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 gave us new, and, and gave us new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. Nothing that we can. So it's so so we're not working for salvation. Amen. We're working because of salvation. It's, it's not because it's not. I'm not working for it. I'm working because of it. I, I'm working because of it. Be, because. Uh, uh, oh, man. See, I, I hear. Because, 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 listen, because, because I've been created now for good works. That, that's who I, 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 listen, I am a new work that was created for good works. 
I'm a new work. I'm, I'm, I'm created anew in Christ for good works. And the, and the scripture tells us that, that, that I was created in Christ for good works before the foundation of the world. That's Ephesians. I'm, I'm a good work created for good works before the foundation of the world. That's what, that's what God tells me. So I don't work for salvation. I'm, I'm, I'm a work of salvation. <laughs> and now it's, and what Paul is telling the Philippians, I'm, you're a work of salvation. So now work out your salvation. Work out what God has already put in you. Do, do the work. Somebody say do the work. I got to work out. See, 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 James, James says this. See, James kind of want, you know, because there was people arguing about this thing called faith and works and faith and works. And people were like saying, well, you know, uh, uh, you got to be working. This, you, 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 your works. It's about the works. And James is saying, no, it's about your faith. And, and our folks say, no, it's about the works. And there are other people saying, no, it's about the faith. And James tried, he has to correct all of this. He says now, uh, in James 2.18, he says, now someone may argue, uh, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, uh, how can you show me faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. Meaning that, look, look, look. You can't tell me that you have faith, that you are a believer, and there's nothing, you have no good works, no products of faith to show us. Your, your faith is producing nothing, but yet you're telling me you have faith. I ain't seen you do nothing. I ain't seen nothing from you. You ain't done nothing. You ain't got nothing that you can show me that tells me you got faith. But I can, James says, but I can show you the works that I've done to show my faith. Because me being kind to you is a work. It is, it's a work. Me, me, me loving you, even though I would like to say something to you that won't be so nice is a work because faith says be kind to one another tender hearted loving one another forgiving one another even as Christ has forgiven you that's my faith and so my faith tells me I ought to forgive and love the work is that I'm being kind to you the work is I'm praying for you even though I know you're my enemy that's 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 I, I, that you know that's why I'm, I'm showing you my faith by my work but that's that's my faith yeah that's my faith I don't, want, I don't want to say what I want to say. I don't want to say what I want to say. I can't say what I want to say. It's a work. Works are, works are good. Works are important. Works demonstrate to others that there's something going on on the inside of you that, that's a little. It, it, it's really by the, the life that you demonstrate after Christ, after you say you embrace Christ, that really convinces and makes other people stand up and take another look at you. Because they know that you wasn't like this before. But now that you're talking that Jesus talk and you going to church and all of that kind of stuff and you, you hanging out with them folk and you ain't like hanging out with us like you used to hang out and you talking different, you living different, you know. You, you know, I don't know you like you know you what you we don't wow what's going on we you don't mess with me like that no more 
Well, okay. It's a, it's, there's a noticeable difference. Notice. Yeah. And the enemy is always out to get you. You know, he's always out to get you because he wants your moment. He wants you to stop the momentum that you're gaining. But you, but we got to do the work. We, we got to do the work. See, for, for athletes to get better, usually, you know, they don't really get better during the season that they play. Usually it's in the summertime, in the off season, where athletes work on specific things concerning their game to improve. Like in the, in the, in the summertime, Lamar, he, 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 you know, he, the games help. But it's, it's, it's in practice. And, and over the summer, Lamar goes down to Florida back home and he works with his coach and he gets some receivers and he works on certain aspects of his game. You know, by he makes he works on his footwork. He makes sure that he's planted correctly, that he's going that he's going his, that his throwing motion yeah, yeah. is consistent. He's working on that. He's working on weightlifting, getting yeah. himself stronger. Yeah, yeah. So, and this all happens usually in the off season. They're developing, and and most of what God does with us. Is is, 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 is is in our process. He before we come to the stage is usually in the off season. It, it's in the off season. It, it's 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 before he puts us out there. He he's working on us, developing us, getting us equipped and ready to get to the game. So when we so when then it's our time to shine. We've practiced. Yeah. We've, de we've developed the discipline. We now have the muscle memory That's it. That's it. to do what's necessary yeah. to be uh, victorious yes, in the game. That, that's what he does. And, 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 and once we get there, once we get to the game, once the season starts, we still practice. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. We still work on the plays. Yeah. Yeah. We still do what's necessary. Yeah. But we go through seasons and of, 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 of certain types of practice. What I practice on in my off season is not the same thing I practice on in the game. When the season is moving. In, in my off time, I, I put more effort in my off time. There's some things that I can make sure that I'm doing in my off time to develop. Because I need to put in the work, the work, the work. I, I, I want to show, I want to show I want to show you what I've done. I don't need to tell you what I worked on. I want to show you what I've done by my performance on the field. I, I, I see, see most of the time and people will tell you, people will tell you, you know, there's a lot of folk who will see your greatness. But they don't know what you've done to get to where you are. There's an old cliche, you want my glory, but you don't know my story. You don't know the stuff that I had to do to get to where I am. You don't know the nights I cried. You don't know how the hard times I had to experience. You don't know the people I had to let go and, and, and the criticism that I took and, and all that stuff to get me to where I am. You don't know the decisions that I had to make, the hard decisions that I had to make. You don't know, but, but you see it. You see this polished person before you. You don't know. You don't know. Ladies go through a whole lot of stuff to get to looking like you're looking. <laughs> You take a lot of time. You know, there's a lot that goes into that. Head choices and dresses and shoes and all of the nails and all of the things, right? 
to get to where you are. But you come out shining. Come out with your swag on. Got your drip dripping. I don't know how much that's a lot of effort that goes in. There's a lot of work. And people don't see the work. They just see what they see. Work goes behind that. Same thing for a Christian life. There's some work that goes behind a Christian life. There's a work that goes behind it. Let me, let me, let me, I'm going to go through some stuff real quick. Um, there's some work goes behind it. And we work with a purpose. We, we work with purpose. That, that's why we work. We work with purpose. There's a present purpose because it is God has charged us to go forth and to, it, 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 you know, I'll, I'll say this. I don't have the scripture up here. But in John, in John 17, Jesus says, Jesus tells his disciples, Jesus tells his disciples, the way the Father sent me, I'm sending you into the world. He, he says, the same way the Father sent me, I'm sending you into the world. He says that in John 17. So the work that Jesus did while he was here, Jesus is looking for us to do the same work. Scripture tells us that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to preach deliverance to the captive. To open up the eyes of the blind. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Still our job. Jesus tells his disciples, he says, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you're going to be my witnesses. witnesses. Yes. 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 So we, he, he's calling us, God, God, God has called us to work. Yes. We, we're to work for the kingdom. All of our work is not the same work. But we ought to be working. To, to move the house of God forward, all of us need to put ourselves in the place that the talent that the Lord has gave us, we ought to be investing it in such a way that it's bringing about dividends for the work of the kingdom and the constant and forward progress of the church. That's what momentum is all about. Everybody's doing their part to keep it moving. Listen, listen. Work, really. What, what, what? Let, I'm going to run through this and I'm, on, I'm done. Work starts on the inside because God has started the work right it's God who has initiated the work that's what Philippians tells us it's God who has initiated this work and it's our job to please him it's to work it out that we might be pleasing to him so what what is it what is it that we ought to be working on right I like, there's a couple of verses. Let's pull up Peter, and after we run through this, I'm done, right? Peter has a lot of stuff. I'm going to get through it real quick. There's a lot of verses, but uh, stay with me, right? Yes, sir. Stay with me. Let's read. This is what Peter says. Peter helps us out. Peter says, may God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in the knowledge of God and Jesus, our Lord. So here we go. Listen. Old, uh, not old, it says, and King, King James says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you as you, uh, uh, in, in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God our Father and the knowledge of, and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. Grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want grace to increase, Peace to increase, we, 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 we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta study. 
we, we, we got to put ourselves in a place of learning. Right? Grace and peace multiplied is multiplied. It says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. So we 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 we've gotten we we we're now we we received this divine power right we we received this divine power he says and because of the, his glory and excellence he has given us great and precious promises these are the promises that enable us to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption corruption caused by human desire he says in view of all of this make every effort everybody say make every effort. Make every effort. Here's the, here's, the, here's, here's the work. Make every effort to respond to God's promises. It says supply your faith with a generous uh, provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge. So moral excellence means goodness. All right. So he gives us these five things. Peter gives us these five things. I'm going to run them down real quick through the scripture. Right. Uh, he says he says moral excellence, knowledge. And it goes from knowledge to self-control, self-control to patience, endurance, from patience, endurance to goodness, to godliness, I'm sorry, to godliness, from godliness to uh, brotherly affection, and from brotherly affection uh, to love for everyone. So he has these five things that he wants us to go, that he, he wants us to work on. And further down in the scripture, Peter says, look, I'm almost ready to go off the scene. Paul, Peter says, I'm going to die. I'm about to die. But before I die, this is the five things that I'm going to consistently remind you to work on. I'm going to consistently remind you to stir yourself up to work on these five things. I don't know why I got four things. I'm like, put bro band on the fifth floor. <laughs> I got four things. Five, these five things. It's five things. Five Five things. <laughs> Five things, five things, right? So these these are the things that you need to work on. So if I if I'm if I'm if I'm an athlete, right? I'm a basketball. That's why I used to play basketball, right? So 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 I would work on you know you had to work on stuff to get better, right? So I worked on my shot, you know, work on my shot, work on my shot. After I worked on my shot, I worked on my dribbling, right? Worked on my dribbling. I would work on getting stronger and lifting weights. I would work on my cardio and I do some running and stuff like that. So I would do those things to continually to improve in some areas, right? Yeah. I would work on my footwork, right? Work on my footwork so when I catch the ball, I can pivot, spin, and all of that, right? Take a you know, uh, step and, and all of those type of things. I would work on that type of stuff. And so Paul would say, if you really want to get better at this Christian life and live the way God wants you to live and to have the things that God wants you to have, these are five things that you need to work on. These, these are five things I want you to work on. I want you to work on being virtuous or morally excellent. That that that's 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 a that's a, that's just being good a, a good a good character a good character Amen. that that's what it being that's what it's all about. I want you to be knowledgeable. That's having practical wisdom, yeah. insight of things. I want you to be tempered, which means that you are mastering self control. You're controlling. You have control over yourself. You're demonstrating self-control over your appetites, over your desires. I need you to be patient, meaning that you endure, that you have some fortitude, that you have some steadfastness, that there's some consistency. I, I, I need you to work on being godly. This godliness has the idea of reverential fear. I want you to walk in reverential fear and and in awe of God, uh, conscious of his presence at all times, seeking to possess his very nature. Right? That's what I need. And I need you to be kind. I want you to be kind. I want you to demonstrate a brotherly kindness. I want you to demonstrate love, the agape love that God demonstrated to us. 
That's, those are the five things that he wants us to work on. Because if we work on these five things, we will be, the scripture says, that we will be productive. That we will not be unfruitful. That we, will, we won't be spiritually blind. That we'll live in such a way that we're not always falling. But it will make us rich and give us a glorious welcome into the kingdom of God. Let me wrap this up. I'm done. I'm working for something. I'm working for something. I'm working for something. Ultimately, I'm working for something. I'm working for something because when I die, the scriptures and revelation says, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, for they rest from their labor and their works do follow them. I'm working for something. See, there's something that you can take to heaven. Yeah, you can take it to heaven. It it, it goes. It's going to go with you. You can't take your money. But, 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 but I, I, can, I can take the money that I invested and put it and sold it into the kingdom of God. And the souls that were saved through the ministry of the kingdom of God, the lives that was touched through the kingdom of God, through the local ministry that I participated in and that I sold into. The, 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 the talent that I have, the talent that I had, I, I, I could take that talent if I'm a singer and, and, and I'm a part of the worship team, the souls that I touch, the lives that I uplifted through song, if I'm a musician, the, the melodies that I played that somebody enjoyed, that, that lifted a burden, that got them out of a difficult place. If, I, if I'm a greeter at the door, the smiles that I smiled, that made people feel welcome walking through the house of God, those things go with me. The outreach that I participated, the clothes that I might have donated to somebody who was in need of them. It helped them stay warm when they was probably outdoors. The food that I might have fixed, that I gave as an outreach offering. It goes with me. Long after the person might have released it. That work still goes with me. It's accounted to me. And it follows me. It follows me. Works that I don't even know I've done. That God is keeping account of. Follows me. It follows me. And, and Paul says this, Paul says, look, look, my, I, I've come, I'm, you know, my time is done. My time is done too. I'm done. Look, but Paul says this, he said, he tells Timothy, he said, Timothy, my time is done. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm about to leave here. I'm about to take off. I'm out, right? He says, he says, he says, but I want you to know, but, 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 but see, see, but there's a crown laid up for me. A crown of righteousness. That's laid up for me because the work I put in, the work that I did, the stuff that I gave to the Lord, the, 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 my willingness to give all to him, that, there's a righteous crown laid up for me. I, 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 there's a crown laid up for me. And, and, and it's not just for me, but it's for all of those who love his appearing. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But, but ultimately, the reason why I work, the reason why I put in the work, is because ultimately, one day, I'm going to stand before God. And ultimately, there may be, I, I, I don't know, there's some stupid stuff that I did along the way that even after I got saved, those works, those, some of them works, might they're they going to get burned up. Yeah, they, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, you know. Some of them works might get burned up. But, 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 but there's some stuff that I know I've done that I'm going to get credited to my account. And ultimately, the best thing that could ever happen to any believer 
at this point in time is to hear God say, well done, good and faithful. That's ultimately all I need. There's a crown of righteousness. I, I want to be able to have something in my hand because ultimately we're going to take off our crowns and lay them at Jesus' feet because of what he did for us. It's not my crown. It's his crown because he did the work. He started the work and he will keep doing the work until the day that he returns. Come on, let's just stand on our feet. Just say, do the work. Okay, I'm done. If you enjoyed the word, come on, give God praise for it. Listen, if you don't know Jesus, I want to give you the opportunity to accept him at this moment. It doesn't matter how far you worked or, or, or how far you may have drifted away. Today is the day of salvation. As Pastor Vernon Hill Sr. said, you don't work to be saved. No, I'm just working out my salvation. That's a difference. I'm not trying to earn the love of God. I already have it. I just have to receive it by faith today. Listen, you don't, let me tell you something. Salvation is simple. You got to realize this. All men were shaped and born into iniquity. That simply means all of us knew how to sin coming out of, coming out of, <laughs> coming out of the womb. There is no good among any of us. We receive salvation because we realize there is no good there. And we've come to the reality of what Jesus has done on the cross. That he has taken the sin of man, the punishment that was rightfully ours. And he said, no, I will become that so you won't. He who knew no sin became sin. And all he says, all you got to do is simply is this. Believe in your heart. Yeah. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Then you're saved. That's it. This is the gift of God. You know what our problem is? We think it's got to be something deeper. No, I got to do this. I got no, 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 no. It's as simple as believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And you are saved. If you're going to think, oh, is a magical feeling going to come upon me? No. What I'm saying is today is the day that you're making the Lord your life. And as you surrender to his work, the Holy Spirit will start doing a work in your life. And all of a sudden, when you get that feeling that you used to do and, and, and you will be good with it. And then now you do it. And it's like, hey, what's that feeling I feel? That's what we call conviction. That means you truly got the Holy Spirit that you truly saved then. Amen. That's the feeling that changes your life is the conviction. If you want to rededicate your life back to Christ, you can do that as well. And if you need a church home, don't you leave out of here without making this your church home. What you ain't knowing? Amen. I would love to be your pastor. Let's do life together. Amen. So everybody with every head bowed, every eye closed, those of you watching online, those of you in person, let's just simply say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I acknowledge I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior. You died on the cross. You were buried and you rose again just for me. And today I'm making you the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. It's not the prayer that makes you saved. It's really the real confession of your heart. If you really made that dedication today, don't leave here without letting one of the pastors know so that we can tell you the next steps of your salvation. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's offering time in the house of God today.